What's going on YouTube? This is Jared from Avila Media. Today we're going to be doing a tutorial on Waypoints, which is a library that allows you to create waypoints that basically fire functions off uh, when you pass through different points in the viewport window. Uh, we're going to demonstrate it by building this awesome looking uh, uh, navigation bar here that's positioned absolutely at the bottom of the page. As you scroll through the viewport, it becomes sticky and fixed at the top. And then when you go back, it positions itself back absolutely. So we're going to do that. Hit that like and subscribe button for more. And let's hit it. All right, let's get started. So Waypoints, it's a great library that I used. I've done it with React projects. Um, you can use a CDN, just do a static page, which is what we're going to be doing today. You can, as you can see here, you can use NPM to install the entire package. If you want to use it for bigger projects or Bower or Yarn or whatever you use, you can visit their GitHub page, which has their documentation and all that fun stuff here too. Um, but we're going to use the CDN. So over here I have my Google search, Waypoint JS CDN. And what I love to go to is a CDNJS.com. Um, it allows you to just find any CDN you want to do. So this one we searched for, we're going to use um, no framework waypoints.minjs. So let's copy that and then we're going to hop into Visual Studio Code. Visual Studio Code is my code editor of choice. You can feel free to use whatever you'd like to um, to do that. I'll have a link in this description below so you'll, you'll have access to these files that I've got over here in my uh, project section. Uh, you can download the entire thing. You'll have the final uh, project, which is basically what we're going to be left over with when I'm done with this tutorial. You'll have the starter pack, which is just empty files like you see here. In fact, I'm going to open these up one at a time and get them ready. Let's get CSS on the side. Boom. Okay. Um, but we're going to start off with our index. Oops. Close that. Go on here. I'm going to use the reason, one of the reasons I love Visual Studio Code is you get Emmet abbreviations like this that give you instant boilerplate right out, boilerplate right out of the box. Tutorials. Alright, so we've got our, our HTML here and we're going to go ahead and link our CDN. I've got it copied, so we're going to just do a, a script tag. And for the source, there's our waypoints. We're also going to link our uh, style sheet. And here at the bottom of the body, we're going to have another script tag for our JavaScript, which is called scripts.js. OK, great. Everything is linked up. So let's go ahead and play with our uh, waypoints. So with the CDN, waypoints is now installed on my static little static project here. Let's build some sections. I'm going to use another admin abbreviation here. Section pound 1 is going to give me a section with an ID of 1 as you can see. We'll give it an H1 and call it 1 and then I'm just going to copy this down two more times uh, to create section 2 and section 3. And let's change these. Another great uh, extension that you can get for Visual Studio Code is the live server. So if I hit Alt L O, it opens up a live server in the browser where I can see in real time what's going on with my HTML. So here you can see my three sections are set up already. Let's add some style here in the CSS just to make things look good and give us some space. So we're going to add a height of 100 viewport height. So that they're full screen. We're going to say. Um, uh, let's do display flex. Make flex containers, justify content center, and align items in the center. This will just basically put everything directly in the center of the page like that. So there we got one, two, and three, just like that. Let's add some color for distinguishment. So let's say in one, we'll go background color is going to be. Now we'll stick with red. Um, two background color is going to be blue, and three background color is going to be uh, green. All right. So now we've got red, blue, green. Good. 
Another thing I like to do is just remove the padding and the margin. This is I do this in my projects, but I'm going to do it now just because I don't like having that white border around the outside. <laughs> Oops, i got to spell things correctly here. Margin zero and padding. Eesh. Sloppy with the keyboard strokes today. There we go. Okay, good. So now we've got that set up. So now let's add some waypoints and have some fun with it. So let's go into our script file here, um, and we're gonna we're gonna go ahead and use regular old JavaScript to uh, grab the actual HTML elements. So if you guys are new to JavaScript, I'll kind of walk through a little bit what we're doing. Const is just declaring a variable, a constant that's not gonna change. We're gonna call this one one, and then we're going to use document dot get element. Why isn't it? There we go. Get element by ID, and then we're going to say the name of it is one. So we're basically saying this ID one. We're grabbing this whole section element here um, and storing it in this variable called one. Okay, let's copy that down two more times and just do the other two. So two and three, and then the ID tags are two and three. Okay, so now all that we've done is create is grab these elements and we're going to store them in those variables. Now we're going to create another uh, variable. This one's going to be for our waypoint. You can name it whatever you want because you really don't use this. You just create the variable and then it fires the function off when you pass it to the viewpoint. So we'll say first waypoint is going to be equal to new waypoint. And this is coming from that library. So we're creating a new waypoint and inside the constructor here we're going to add an object and this is the configuration object here. So the first thing it wants is the element and we'll say element 1. Oops. And then the next thing is the handler. And the handler is a function. And we're going to give it an anonymous function. Uh, and then inside in this function this is what happens when you pass through the top of that element. Um, we're using ES5 anonymous function, not an arrow function or anything like that, because one thing that it allows you to do, and let's take a look at it right now, is it allows you to have this that points at this waypoint object, which gives you some attributes and things that you can uh, utilize for that. So let's go back to our thing here, open up the console, and check out what happened. Bink. Okay, so it logged this T thing. And you can see this is this is pointing to the waypoint. So we've got an adapter element, access, access is vertical, callback function, which is nothing because I don't have anything in there. Uh, context, it gives us all of these things, the element, where we're at, lots and lots of information that you can use. One thing that's really cool is this trigger point. Uh, the trigger point tells you where it's being fired off at. So right now it's being fired off at zero, which is the very top of the page here. Um, which is why it fired off right away. Now, another thing you can do with the waypoint is you can is the next attribute that you can give this object is give it an offset number, and we're going to give it a negative number so that it offsets below the point. If we give it a positive number, it'll it'll fire off above where we're going. So let's do that and then it'll reload. See, nothing fires off right now because it's going to be closer to around here. It's 100 pixels down, so as we scroll, boom, there it is. RT element, and now you can see the trigger point is 100 because we offset it by 100. So it's 100 units down on the waypoint, and you can see it fires when you scroll up too, which is cool, and which is, leads me to my next point. Um, you can pass in an attribute into this function called direction. And let's, instead of console logging this, let's console log the direction now. So now with that, when we reload, we get nothing. And then as we scroll down, it logs down. When we scroll up, it logs up. So it give, you can find the direction. And that's actually, we're going to use that to conditionally uh, add and remove classes from our navigation bar that we're going to make here in a second. Um, which get, uh, which is how we end up doing that. So let's just add another waypoint here. And we'll call this one second waypoint. Uh, we're going to give it the second element here. 
um, and then we'll say console log uh, second waypoint and we'll give this one a positive offset so you can see that it'll fire earlier than it's supposed to so here we are about 100 pixels down it'll fire the down console log and then 100 pixels before this line which is where the second element starts it'll hit that second waypoint and then same thing on the way up it'll hit it again on the way down up and down it fires every time the waypoint that is set hits that so let's remove the offset just so we can see more clearly this line passing through so there's the first one the second one's going to hit as soon as this line crosses the top of the viewport boom there it is and every time it crosses the top it's going to fire that function so that's pretty useful pretty neat stuff here okay so that's the basics of waypoint uh, real real basic so let's go ahead and uh, have some fun here with the uh, navigation bar I'm going to go into the final stuff here and I'm just going to copy the markup here rather than retyping it all just to save us some time just basic markup it's got a navigation and this is basically the only new thing it's got this navigation with an H1 and an unordered list and then all the list items you know, standard stuff so we can even check it out Here's our ugly markup without any style. Yay! Okay, so now let's go into the CSS. Whoops, this guy. And let's go ahead and copy all of the CSS into our starter file. And then when we save that, you'll see now we have some style here. So now it's positioned absolutely at the bottom. And actually, let's uh, take a look at the CSS just so I can kind of explain a couple things here. Um, so, let's close the final files, we don't need those anymore. So what we've got is our navigation, let's scoot this over, our navigation, it's just some basic styles, Z index of 1, um, and where are we, here it is, the class nav, so this is where the magic happens. So over here, our navigation has the class nav by default, that's what I set it up as. So this nav is positioned absolutely on the bottom at zero with left zero, which is why it's down here at the bottom of the screen. So it's perfectly just positioned down here, um, down at the bottom. And now this sticky class is what we're going to add to it when it passes the viewport, or it passes the top of the viewport. And that's going to change its position to fixed, and then change it to top zero, so no longer on the bottom, and left still zero because it's it's width 100% so it doesn't matter I don't even really need that there um, and that'll happen when we get here it'll pass through and it'll become fixed and stay at the top instead so it'll look like it just kind of sticks to the top it's a really cool effect it's one of my favorite use cases for uh, waypoints is to do that so let's go ahead and, and create that now so we're gonna go into our script file which is now empty we're gonna create a new constant call it nav and we're gonna do document dot get element by ID and the ID I gave it is also nav. We can verify that right here. ID nav. Great. So we've got the navigation element in this variable. So now let's create our nav waypoint. Oops. By doing new waypoint. Oops. New waypoint. Our configuration object, the element, is going to be nav. The handler is going to be this function, Oops. and what we're going to say is we're going to oh, and we want to pass in that direction at or uh, we need this because this is going to how we're, this is going to be how we're going to fire it off conditionally. So we're going to say if direction is equal to down, so for scrolling down, um, then we want to essentially add the class sticky and remove the class nav. So we're going to use, again, some JavaScript here. We're going to take our element nav and we're going to say class list dot add, and then the name of the class, sticky. And then we're going to do the same thing, nav dot class list dot remove and we want to remove the nav class. So now, 
when that saves, as soon as the top of this passes through the top of the viewport width, which is exactly what we want it to, it's going to change classes on us. Boom. And look at that. Now it sticks to the top. Now it just stays up there from now on because it doesn't do anything on this on the up part because we didn't tell it to. But let's just verify this. Uh, let's reload real quick. Let's verify this in our elements. You can see we've got the header, the nav, and here it is, class, right here, class is nav, and as we scroll through, boom, class changes to sticky, and it just stays sticky, so it stays here at the top because uh, the sticky class is positioned at the top of the page. So now let's do the else, else if, we could just do else, but I'm just going to do it like this for fun. So direction, if the direction is up, so if we're scrolling up this time, then we want to do the same thing, but we want to basically do the opposite. So now class list dot add, and this time we want to add the nav class back, and nav class list dot remove the sticky class. So now when we're scrolling up, it should change back. So let's go ahead and watch this happen. Let's open this guy up again. So here's our nav with the class nav. As we scroll down, changes to sticky, sticks to the top, and then as we scroll back up, as soon as this passes through that same waypoint, it changes it back to nav and positions it at the bottom again. So there we go, sticks, sticks. Awesome, and that's it, that's waypoints.js. Uh, very, very brief uh, tutorial on that and this cool little nav bar that you can do. There's so much that you can do with this. So you guys have some fun. Don't forget to hit the like button if you like this video so I can know uh, to make more like it. Hit the subscribe button so you can be notified when I create new videos. Uh, keep creating, keep creative, and have fun. Thanks, guys.